It's now official. Raila to Africa. President William Ruto has officially uh, unveiled Raila Odinga as the Kenyan candidate, of course, for the African Union chairmanship. That is the chairmanship commission chair. And of course, he will be going out to seek votes hoping that he will succeed uh, Musa Faki Muhammad as the next African Union Commission Chair. And that is a discussion, quite a show of solidarity from the East Africa Community Block, from Uganda to Tanzania, and of course from Rwanda, Burundi. All they send their delegation, some, the head of state, actually were there to witness this momentous occasion. And of course, even as Kenya, uh, you know, seek to make history. And in that particular, the man of the hour, the man of the moment, is none other than Raila Amolo Odinga. And of course, to help us unpack this discussion, it's a heavy topic. And of course, uh, my guest is Honorable Gideon Mereru, the CEO of Kovijana Initiative. Gideon, Asante Sana for making time. Thank you, Amna. All right. So, right to it, uh, Gideon. Well, we have seen uh, the show of solidarity in regard to our neighbors, Tanzania, Uganda, and of course, all these pledge their loyalty and their support to Mr. Odinga. First of all, how do you fancy Ray Odinga's chances in this uh, monkey water of geopolitics? Uh, thank you so much. Huh? My name is uh, Gideon Mereru, mm -hmm. the current Chief Executive Officer of Odinga. It's a great honor to have a conversation with you regarding the state of the nation. And actually, just by asking the question, who is the man, the man of the day, the man of the hour, and the man of the year we are talking about? His Excellency, Right Honorable Raila Molo Dinka. It's evident, and it's something that actually is there in our public domain, that right now all eyes are actually looking back to him to ensure that he cannot to be the current, to be the upcoming chair for AU. Right, Honorable Raila Amolo Odinka. And there is a lot that we know about him. And uh, basically, he is actually the person who introduced the current new constitution that we have, either by championing, and of course, he has been on the political limelight, something that all Kenyans know about him. All right, proceed, Gideon. And of course, uh, Gideon, as you talk about the caliber of a man, the champion and the defender of the Constitution, well, the record is out there. It's clear. Everybody can see the immense contribution that he has, uh, or rather he has actually contributed to the democracy of the country. Now, the big tax are at lies ahead and this is the stewardship of the africa as a continent and in regard to this he'll be facing other giants in their equal right uh, in their pursuit of this the noble and the global cause of defending the rights of africa each member state and the competition i dare to say it's stiff and of course they'll be facing uh, you know equal and worthy opponent in this but what are some of the you know the scorecard that will actually propel uh, Mr. Dinga to this, um, you know, the hot seat that he seeks to uh, inherit from Musa Faki Muhammad. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Auma. As I've started saying before, that it's evident that we know the man right now of the hour is His Excellency, right, Honorable Raila Amolo Dinga. And actually, by saying that, what are some of the issues, what are some of the maybe factors that we consider, or even things that we'll be able to make us a surety that right on Raila Molo Dinka is able to the task? It is evident. And when I say that, uh, personally, when I was growing up, and I will definitely use as an example, I used to hear Raila Molo Dinka, either because of he used to be on the line on duty to ensure that political line has been checked out, leadership has been checked out, so it's something that I grew up knowing about him. And for instance, I think it's clear that he's able to the task. What we are not sure of, the opponent who actually is coming also to compete with, because everybody is saying that they are, they are, they are qualified, they have leadership skill, it's evident on their biography line on leadership, but I feel 
it's the right now. First time, we have to have an ownership that East Africa must also have one of the candidates to be the chair. So there is one thing that actually we are pushing for. Despite that we have two candidates who are competing for the AU chair. That is evident. And something that I have told you, we'll also have to track his political line of leadership. He has been there, be, be an opposition leader, checking the government what he has been doing. And it is evident that, for sure, being a strong opposition leader to this country, it has contributed to immense development of our country. It has also bring transparency. So by saying that, what will propel right Fanari Boraila Molo Dinka into the AU chair? It is evident and we have hope, and it's the right time that Kenyans, not only Kenyans, but Africa and large, should come in support of him to be the chair for AU. All right. And uh, Gideon talking about uh, the support, um, that is fairly on the equal measure of this particular discussion that we are having tonight, but there is some set requirement and, uh, you know, standard uh, that each candidate must actually meet. And we have seen the education background, we have seen, you know, in terms of experience, uh, what is required, but there is another tricky aspect of it. Now, the voting part. Remember, for winner to be declared the winner of this, um, the African Union Commission chairman seat, then it means that at least the candidate must uh, Ghana two third of the votes. We all know, uh, you know, this is a very something that you will go out and and, uh, and campaign for it. It's a normal, it's a very competitive uh, affair, and of course, Kenya have uh, fronted their, um, have actually, you know, unveiled their team, their their campaign team for Mr. Odinga, but. The candidate, like for example, uh, Mr. Mahmoud Yusuf from Djibouti, this is a foreign uh, minister. And uh, when you go to the history, history will tell you that majority of chairman that we have had holding this, the position of the African Union Commission chairman, then they have had a background from the uh, foreign ministry. So this means that uh, probably the candidate here, Mr. Mahmoud, uh, by the virtue of being the foreign minister of uh, Djibouti, probably has made some inroad. And this is the key consideration. Do you think probably this is an area that um, we have tackled in as much as Mr. Dinga has served in the African Union uh, in the capacity of the infrastructure, where he was very instrumental in championing uh, for the Africa uh, affairs in terms of infrastructure? But do you think diplomacy is something that we should pay more attention? Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Omar. And I will definitely say, a leader is a leader. And as you have quoted example that most of the people who have been on the trajectory line to become the AU chair must have the diplomacy, have maybe served as a foreign minister in their land. And it is evident, that is something that I can quote, uh, that Raila has been uh, also an envoy of infrastructure to the AU and actually has served very well. So I believe that. Uh, by saying what you, or by asking what you are asking, Raila is qualified, and uh, I am not speaking in an angle that is one of us as a Kenyan, but I'm speaking in an angle that it is there in history, it's there in document, it's something that people can make approval for. The other thing we can also see his long term of leadership, meaning that this is a person who is equipped with knowledge, this is a person who understands about leadership, this is a person who cannot be shaken easily. And you have just mentioned, there are some of the qualifications that we can actually see in terms of the education. Right, uh, Honorable Raila Molo Dika is a doctor. That is evident and we can confirm that. He's actually experienced maybe in terms of language. A leader should speak French or English. And I think he can fluently speak English as he has always been done. All right. In terms of okay, and um, uh, sorry to cut you short, and uh, there is now that uh, as we speak about now the qualities and the caliber of a man. Remember, in the last election, we had one of our very own, by then, Ambassador Amina Mohammed, uh, the former um, uh, sports CS, and uh, he was against now the current African uh, Africa Union Commission Chairman right now, Mr. Faki, uh, Musa Faki Mohammed, and uh, we all saw what happened now. The big question will be, what are some of the critical lessons that we learned back then that we hope to improve this time round? 
because we have our candidate just like the previous one. Uh, thank you. Thank you again. I think one of the hope that we have right now, the East Africa block is actually coming together. And that is something that we can attest. That is something that we have seen. And it's evident today what happened today in the State House, that actually we have some of East African leaders who came on board to support uh, the fight for right on Raila Molo Dinka to go for AU. So by ask, actually asking what you have just asked right now, I think it's evident right now that if the East Africa will come into block, and right now it's just a matter of going to mobilize for the other African state to support the fight for right on our border, to get into the AUC, I think it will be an added advantage for that. Okay. Now I want us to transition now to the Katiba 2010. Well, today, the August of the 27th of August 2024 marks exactly 14 years since uh, the Katiba 2010 was promulgated, and uh, it came with its fair share of uh, you know hopes. And uh, 14 years down the line, that is absolutely it's fair to say we have seen some tremendous uh, growth and of course um, improvement in terms of many aspects. But at the same time. We have actually struggled as a country. Well, 14 years down the line, how will you describe the Katiba 2010? What are some of the key milestones that we have achieved as a nation? And what are some of the bases? Wow. Thank you so much. I will not quit from appreciating and being happy person for the Constitution 2010 that we got actually. Because the devolution has really worked. And besides the challenges that we have in line, actually, I think it's evident that the devolution has really given Kenyans the best. Because right now, in terms of accessing the resources, they are easily accessible to the ground level. So if I can be asked that, what will be my view towards the Katiba that actually we got back 2010? I will definitely say we are doing well. Though we still have some challenges, and that is coming light, there is no road that will ever be smooth. There always must have ups and downs. But I think the, the, the fact is we need to recognize, to support, and actually acknowledge that the Constitution 2010 has really changed the life of Kenyans in terms of development, in terms of infrastructure, in terms of accessing resources. So, if I may ask, if I may answer what you have just right, asked right now, what will be the story of the Constitution 2010 that we have got 14 years down the line right now? It is the best. All right. This Constitution, the Katiba 2010, uh, will describe it as um, you know a child who was born and uh, bred of, and this child carried a lot of hope uh, to the nation and uh, per se, let's say, the parents. And uh, Katiba 2010 came with a promise of better uh, improvement of life, service delivery, uh, bringing services closer to the people. I'm talking about now the devolution and, of course, um, you know, uh, the services at the county level. And we had uh, some issues like, um, you know, respect to humanity, you know, the rule of law, governance, uh, corruption. All of these were some of the areas that were highlighted as that uh, that Katiba 2010 will actually, you know, uh, cure and bring the antidote and probably make an end to the vicious circle that we have witnessed. The event today that has concurrently happened, even as Kenyans celebrate Katiba at 14, there is a section of Kenyans and the young people in particular who are actually just like the opposite of what we usually, uh, you know, accustom ourselves to. Instead of celebrating, they were lamenting about the injustices being done, the rate of corruption that has, uh, you know, skyrocketed. According to them, they feel that um, in as much as Katiba brought a lot of hopes, but they feel like the gains that the country has made is slowly, you know, backtracking. What's your take on that, Gideon? Mm. When actually I started to say the Constitution 2010 has given us the best thing that we can actually acknowledge. But at the same time, we still have challenges for it. 
Because when a baby is growing, there is a, a way that one has to nature. You see, there are ups and downs. You clean the baby. Sometimes they go, they identify their clothes. So you find the same way that we are making as a country. The constitution has given us the right, has given us the resources. But we still have a challenge in terms of accountability, in terms of taking the leadership trajectory that we are having. Who are these people watching over the resources of Kenya? And you have just said that one thing. Despite the fact that we are acknowledging and supporting the constitution that has, we got in 2010, and we are right now 14 years, there are still people who are in the streets. And I would say it is their right the constitution of Kenya, 2010 that we got, still has given the same Kenyans right through Article 37 of our constitution, which clearly states that Kenyans have the right to demonstrate, assemble, petition, and present their issues to the relevant officers. By asking what you have just said right now, it is right that we still have challenges, and that is evident either in our county level that we are having resources that actually we are, they are being allocated to the Kenyan, but it is not getting to the relevant areas or relevant people or targeted group of the people. You find that uh, make Kenyans angry because now, why then? We're still talking of accountability, transparency, good leadership, governance, but yet we still have those people who remain behind what we are talking about. So, I would definitely say it is true that we have challenges and people are squandering resources for Kenya. We have seen some of the governors who are being uh, even called for uh, ask question about what they are doing for the resources that they are being allocated to the county. And some of them even find challenges. You see, we have seen some of the people being fired from leadership places. So when we are talking about the good side of uh, Constitution 2010, we still have challenges on. All right. And uh, even as we wind up uh, this discussion, and of course, um, as we shed light on some of the gains and, of course, the misses that we have uh, so far, uh, you know, miss out as a country 14 years down the line, one of the very critical areas that uh, we seem to struggle, and this is actually a bridge too far uh, to even come close to achieving it. I'm talking about now the two-third gender rule and in regard to this, the inclusion that even the young people themselves feel that they have been left out uh, in matters governance, which is very critical in the running of affairs of the nation because young people are the part of, uh, you know, the nation building and of course, majority. Well, as we reflect on this, um, uh, the misses that we have made as a country, of course, 14 years down the line. What are some of the areas that you, from the young person perspective, you really like to see uh, maybe going forward uh, will be uh, probably change or do you foresee a scenario where maybe we will amend the constitution so that we can try and fix these areas that we seem to be really struggling with? Uh, in terms of asking, like, what is the role that we have taken in terms of gender equality? It is evident that we are trying as a country, despite the fact that uh, we have not yet met the qualification. But in terms of gender equality, having also it on board, it's evident because in our constitution, we have specific seats for ladies, that is the women rep, are trying to meet up the gender role. We still also see the appointment which has happened and right now we have the three arms of government and basically one of it is actually led by the lady and the other important government position that we can imagine the state law led by the newly appointed uh, attorney general and we have the chief justice so it's evident that uh, women are taking into the leadership spaces and uh, I, I think it's the high time that we need to approach that in reality, that these spaces, we people should come boldly, compete, check also initiatives so that they can have an ownership to claim for their seat. All right. Now, that will maybe answer what you have just asked right now. Young people are not considered. And that is something that people are using as an advantage any time that we have the campaign process coming on board. You find any everyone has to consider these young people, call them on board. But when it comes to a time of resource sharing, when it comes to a point of 
even the position, the employment, where are these young people? And you can confidently uh, see that we don't have the representation of young people, apart from the junior spaces, junior leadership that are there. But when will be that time that you will be able to say, as young people will feel recognized? And that is why that you see some of us, when I say some of us, I'm a young person. So basically, you see them in the street demonstrating, calling for justice, calling for accountability, calling for employment. And it is something that we used to fight back even when we are fighting for our independence. You see? So I think it's the high time that we need to recognize them because they are the majority. But why are we not engaging them in the table when it comes to a time of resource sharing? All right. Well, uh, okay, thank you so much, uh, Gideon. I'm afraid that is uh, the whole time we had uh, tonight as far as uh, the state of the nation uh, conversation is concerned. That is uh, Honorable Gideon uh, Mereru, Chief Executive Officer of Kwa Vijana Initiative. Asante Sana for making time. Thank you so much. And now, I think we need to tell Kenyans, let us all come all right. and support our country because it's the best that we have for. Fair enough. Thank you so much. And of course, uh, we appreciate for that, uh, you know, very important discussion that touches the heart and, of course, the matter uh, involving the governance and, of course, the state of the nation.